Well, here's our typical parabola problem involving some kind of projectile motion. And, um, well, uh, let's go through it. Here, visualize here. I'm starting at this height of 20, and I'm launching some projectile. And it's going to climb, climb, reach a high point, and then descend back down to the Earth. Now, either it's... Um, Either the actual path is modeled by the, by the parabola, or in our case, the horizontal axis might be just measuring time. In either case, right here, well, if you're in a physics class, you'll have to come up with a formula. In my class, or an algebra class, you probably are given the formula, because we're just worried about doing the math. So I gave you a nice simplified problem here. We're going to say that, well, the initial velocity is 40 meters per second, uh, 40 meters per second, and the acceleration of gravity, we rounded from its 9.8 to, uh, say, 10 meters per second squared, and that would be in the negative direction as gravity is pulling us down, and we started from a height of 20 meters. So again, this is um, this equation is given to us, and let's just see if we can make some sense of it. We're going to answer a series of five questions. All right, let's go to the other screen. Flip. Okay, um, there's five questions. Wow. Um, well, we're going to start with the first one. Well, let's find the time that it takes for this projectile to reach its maximum height. Okay, so question A. Um, well, I, we know that the axis of symmetry of a parabola follows this formula. And we know our coefficients, our a term is the negative 10, the b term is the 40, and the c term is 20. So I'll just substitute directly into here. Notice I'm changing, uh, replacing the x with t since we're graphing, we're graphing time on our horizontal axis. And I've got negative 40 over, well, negative 20. That's going to simplify to two. So our time, or the maximum height, is going to occur at the time of two because the time of two is the axis of symmetry. Let's visualize. Back to the screen. Right here, I'll move this out of the way, my axis of symmetry is right there at t equals two seconds. So that means, again, this projectile is launched it reaches its max height right here. Now instead of just reading off the graph, we're going to calculate what is the y value at this height. Well, that's easy enough. Go back to the go back to the arithmetic. I'm going to clear this out of here and let's find the max height simply by taking our equation and we're going to substitute or just evaluate the function at time equals 2. Now, maybe you're writing it in another form, y is equal to, that's all right. But we're using function notation right here. Well, let me see, I've got the three different terms. The first term, um, negative 40, you see 2 squared times negative 10. So I've got one term in the negative direction, 80 plus 20, 100 minus 40. Oh, well, that's an easy 60. Do that in our heads. So we've got the function evaluated at 60, or at well, an input of 2 gives me an output of 60. So, graphing it, I guess that means that my maximum value, right there, the max height in this parabola, is going to be, so I can read directly across there, well, it's 60. So there you go. We found the maximum value, and we found the time that it occurs. What else is there? Well, oh, let's see what we got. Um, well, we're done with this problem. Oh, yeah, the third question. I'll find the time for the projectile to reach 50 meters. Now, you might, well, okay, you'll probably get a question like this on your test, too. But um, let me go back to the picture. And let me get this out of the way. We've got the maximum height, but remember, projectile starts here. It's going to be going up, up, up. This on the graph is y equals 50. So I'm expecting the
the projectile is going to pass through here on the way up. It's going to hit the maximum and it's going to pass through there on the way down. So you can see one, two intersections right there. So I'm expecting two values there. So let's do the math. Okay. This time I'm going to take the equation and instead of substituting an input for t, I'm going to say, no, I'm going to set the output equal to 50. So let's see if we can find the value of t, the input that would, that would give me this 50. And uh, now you know what to do from here. I'm going to subtract a 50 from both sides of the equation. Now I've got myself my good old fashioned, I'm back to my quadratic here. I can, I suppose I could use this formula. I could, but let's see if I have to. Now, this is a pretty simple equation. We're just solving at this point. I could simplify it. I can divide out all these tens. Yeah, look at that. I got easy coefficients. And I might do another step. Um, personally, I just can't stand having a, when I'm trying to factor, having a, a negative sign here. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative one. Again, very conveniently that has the effect of just reversing all the signs. Because now I go to the factor, I'm thinking, hmm, I got a coefficient of 1 for t squared. I've got, I'm thinking whole numbers or integers whose products, two numbers whose product is 3 and whose sum, that's the way I taught you, is equal to 4. Well, that's pretty easy. That's going to be 1 and 3. So there it is in factored form. I've got the expression t minus 1 times the expression t minus 3 is equal to 0. And then remembering my zero product property, that means the first expression is 0 or the second expression is 0. And therefore, I have two solutions. I've got t is equal to 1 or I've got t equals 3. Well, let's go back to our picture. Well, let me see if I've got, um, this is time of one second, and this is three seconds. So right here, this would be the point 150, one second, 50 meters of elevation. And this is the point three seconds, 50 meters, 350. So you see, these are my two intersections. So I gave you nice, easy numbers on this one. So, what else is there? Um, maybe I should write, maybe, let's make a note of this. So is that this, it was there at one second and at three seconds. Okay, um, next part, so we'll clean this up and we'll answer the fourth question. Oh, what time is this rocket or this projectile going to hit the ground? So, um, well, take this formula, no, not that, take this formula again. This time I'm going to set the output to zero. Because after all, I want to see when it's going to hit the ground. And I just set the ground at zero. And in this case, I'm going to simplify my expression. Notice in, um, I'm just going to divide out, factor out a negative 10 because again, I like a positive A term, personal choice there. And I'm gonna to try to factor it. See if I can factor that. I need a number, let me see, two numbers whose product is two and whose difference is four. Hmm. Well, you know, as long as we're working in the set of integers, uh, I can't think of any. So, see, this isn't a good idea. That's how you know. Some students in my class say, how do you know when to factor and when to use this? Well, can't factor. It's a good time to use this. Then let's just use it. I'm going to make the substitution. I'm going to use my, I'm going to use negative 4 for my b. And let me see. And then my 1 is for my a and negative 2 for my c term. And you've probably done this a hundred times in your class. You've done the substitutions. 
And now let's see if we can work them out just a little bit. That's going to simplify. Uh, I've got 4 plus or minus. Okay, um, I got negative 4 squared. Remember, the negative 4 is being squared. The in, that's negative 4 in parentheses. Um, when I do my initial substitution, I always like to show this. See, I'll say the opposite of negative 4 to make sure I, I don't make any mistakes. Um, I got this. Well, it's time to split this into two answers. Because we know this means uh, 4 minus radical 24 over 2. That's the 16 plus the 8. And 4 plus radical 24 over 2. Now we can estimate these answers because radical uh, 24 is close to radical 25, which is 5. So let's, um, but let's see if we can get this in decimal. Here we go. You need practice with this. So I'm just going to take the expression. I'm going to work this forward. And um, you've got to know your calculators, but most of them know some order of operations. I'm going to take the 4. I'm going to subtract. Type in 24. I hit the square root. I check 4.89. See, I've got a number close to 5 that shows up. Then I hit the equal sign. Yep, yeah, yeah, and it did. It took uh, 4, it subtracted that, so I get a negative number, as I expected. After all, 4 minus 5 is negative 1. I now divide by 2. And I've got my first solution. Negative, uh, I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth, because that's what we do on most of our problems. I don't know if I can measure time to a hundredth of a second, but we're going to go for that negative 0.45 seconds. So let me write down over here what my first solution, right there. Now for the second solution, go back to the calculator. This time I'm going to take 4 plus, there's my 24, my square root, of course, same as it was before. But this time, see I was adding, I hit my equal sign. Okay, and that made sense. It's close to 9, as we expected. 4 plus 5 would have been 9. And I divide by 2. And I see now that rounded to the nearest hundredth, that's going to be 4 and 45 hundredths. So I can put my second solution in there. Wow. Well, we've answered four of the five questions. Let's, uh, let's go to the other. Uh, let's just flip over here and finish it off. Um, what we just figured out, we just found the two roots, and when we found these roots, we've got an answer here and an answer here. But here's where you've got to stop. You've got to make sense of the actual problem. You see, the problem with this one is this root's negative. Um, you can have a negative root, but not in this case, because we started the time right here. We started here, um, and we started at this height. So really, we start the problem here. We go up here. We're modeled all the way through here. Strikes the ground right here, and then it stops. You see, the parabola is limited as far as its application to us, and we express that by stating the domain and the range. The domain or all the viable inputs. You see, everywhere from zero in the horizontal axis, my time could be zero, it climbs through one, it's at 50 feet, at its maximum height at two seconds, three seconds, and at 4.45 seconds it hits the ground and it stops obeying the parabola. See, so it doesn't follow the curve anymore, so that's my complete, or that's my set of inputs, that's it. Now, you're probably thinking, well, if there's a domain, there's a range. And yeah, you can see, well, you can't be below zero because it's not going to tunnel underground unless it hits really hard. But it's not going under there, and it's not going above there. I know my maximum was 60, so that means my range is going to be from zero to 60. How's that?